guys listen to me? Okay. Yes, Dr. Hi. teacher. <laughs> How <laughs> have you been? <laughs> good. 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 Has it been a good week? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Are you able to see what I'm presenting now? Lo que estoy presentando que dice adjectives, ¿lo pueden ver? Yes. Okay, that's perfect. So, we're going to go over what a little bit of what we guys been talking for the last two weeks about the verbs. If you guys have any question, any doubts, anything that you need to discuss still about the verbs, we can go over them now and um, see what um, questions you still have about it. So, vamos a ir sobre lo que hemos hecho las otras últimas dos semanas eh, para ver cómo van con los verbos. Si tienen alguna duda, alguna pregunta referente a los verbos, este es el momento porque vamos a hacer los adjetivos. Dentro de un rato vamos a empezar con adjetivos. So, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo les ha ido con los verbos? Con los pasados, presentes. Pues yo de repente me confundo un poquito con algunos, como cuando es, uh, cuando se le tiene que agregar el, el um, como cuando es did o will o el going ing, es como que todavía me confundo, pero pienso que quizá eso va a ser como con la misma práctica, que voy a saber cómo aplicarlos. Correcto, porque esos son verbos irregulares que se cambian diferentes. Esos no son los que llevan el ed al final. Ajá. Hay unos verbos que son irregulares y la única manera de aprenderlos de memoria es practicarlos, practicarlos, practicarlos hasta que te lo memorices. Eh, porque no son... Y en español pasa lo mismo también. Tenemos verbos regulares e irregulares y ese sí lo es. Eh, entonces, vamos a empezar um, con... Cada uno de nosotros vamos a decir una o dos oraciones de lo que hicimos esta semana que pasó para practicar un poco de los verbos para después entrar a los adjetivos. So, voy a empezar con Rosal y voy a empezar por mi esquina izquierda superior. Tell me how was your last week? Hi. Hi, Rosalie. How was your last your week? Uh, and last week, uh, no, you not come in the class. You didn't come to the class? But what did you do last week? Did you do something special or different last week? Did you go out? Did you go dancing? Did you go to a barbecue? Did you do something different? Um, no, no. No? Okay. <laughs> so we're going to go. Myrna, how was your last week? Thank you, Rosalie. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, last week, I I go work to the park. My kids. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, uh, I I is cooking cookie or cooking. You cooked. I cook the the chicken or. Everybody in my casa. Um, they were happy in the house. You cook for everybody in your house. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I. ¿Cómo se dice? Uh, I. Segura que tu cocina muy bueno. <laughs> Vamos a ver quién es la próxima. Tengo varios con el video apagado. Marlene. <laughs> No tienes que tener el video prendido, pero me puedes hablar. Eh, eh. Mm -hmm. um, last week we went uh, at mall. Mm -hmm. I cook, cook, it, cook, it. cook, 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 I see uh, one movie. You saw one movie? Uh, okay. You uh, see. So, 
so my my movie and uh, play play it play, play. it mm -hmm. in, in the ground in the grass 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 mm -hmm. grass and, and we cómo se dice pasamos pas, uh, pas, 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 pasamos past 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 You had a good time last week. That sounds awesome. So who else want to tell me about your previous week? Who's the volunteer? ¿Quién es la voluntaria la próxima? Caro. Oh, wait a minute. Um, ahorita están timbrando un... Ok, un no hay problema. Perdón. No hay problema. Sí, lo que ya contesta la puerta, alguien más es voluntario para decirnos que how was your last week? Okay. Let's wait for Carol so Carol can come and tell us what she did past week. I'm here. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, um last week uh, we went to a little uh, party. Mm -hmm. uh, um there there was not a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It was a reunion for a dar my daughter's friend, mm -hmm. and and then we came home early, uh, mm -hmm. eight o'clock. We stayed in home, mm -hmm. and that that was the Saturday. And Sunday, we stayed in home all day, uh, making um, we did. Uh, We watch it movies and you watch movies play mm -hmm. it and mm -hmm. I don't know the uh, every every weekends that mm -hmm. that uh, we can stay in home we you don't, can we, stay don't home. we don't have family here so our family is just my husband and my son and my daughter so normally we we don't go out and we you stay home pandemic things we actually stay home all the time so yeah we try yeah. to do these um fun things here together i think that happens to most of us when we don't have family over here we just stay home and especially with this cold it's cold so this week says um we already talked about the ver with this conversation that we just had we practiced a little bit about the verb tenses the past and um now um we talk also about what did we practice what did we do this week we're gonna touch a little bit on adjectives adjetivos because we're gonna one start putting sentences together with verbs and adjectives and doing a little bit more stuff And, I, and we, we start saying that an adjective is a word that tells us more about a noun. It describes or modifies a noun. Un adjetivo nos dice un poco más de eh, un nombre de, una per, de, de, de la persona de la oración. Lo describe o lo modifica. Es lo mismo que en español, obviamente, pero como les estoy introduciendo vocabulario, por eso es que tengo estas descripciones de adjetivo y todo para que se vayan familiarizando con vocabulario. En inglés dice, an adjective often come before a noun, a green car, a dark sky, an interesting story. In English, most of the time you're going to find that adjective, um, perro, ese, en vez de decir el perro marrón es the brown dog. So el, el adjetivo va primero en, en inglés, muchas veces, de, depende de cómo la oración esté compuesta. Pero, dice también, but adjectives can also modify pronouns. Puede modificar el pronombre. Los pronombres son she, he, him, they, theirs. El que en español sería él, ella, ellos, nosotros, ustedes, es eso. So, modifica pronombres. They were empty. I thought it seemed strange. And those 
are not expensive. So those are ways that we can use the adjectives in a sentence to give her more uh, richness. I'm going to put a video now. Let me see if it allows me to do the, the video thing now so you can start um, having an idea about adjectives. Let me go ahead and get it on YouTube for you. I had a link here, please. Can you see the video? Mm -mm. No? No. Okay. Give me a second. Let me try to, to put the video on so you guys can visually see what we're talking about that check this. Excuse me. No se escucha, permíteme un segundo. Permíteme un segundo. Mm, déjame ver si se escucha. No se escucha para nada. No. No. Ok, no me voy, a, no me voy a, a complicar la vida mucho con eso. Lo, lo, lo presento ya mismito. Vamos a seguir con lo que estaba presentando en la clase. So, I'm about you presenting. Ok. Como estábamos. Cuando, cuando tengan, when I have the opportunity, I'm going to try to put the video back on. It explains it a lot better. So we're going to go to adjectives. So in this line on the left side, we have the adjective in Spanish and what it says in English. Those are the most common adjectives that we can use. Just take a minute and read over them. And... Um, let me know we can go over and see if we can put some sentences together with those adjectives okay okay Estamos tratando de hacer oraciones con estas palabras que son de adjetivos y leerlas y entenderlas y hacer montar una oración sencilla con estas palabras que son adjetivos. Me deja saber cuándo estén ready. Vamos a comenzar con la primera palabra. Agradable. Pleasant. Um, ¿Quién quiere darme una oración con pleasant? 
con agradable. Eh. Sería, she is a pleasant person. She is a pleasant person. That is a good sentence. Next one, we have amable, friendly. Podríamos utilizar la misma oración, she is a friendly person, because that adjective can describe mostly everything. Pero ¿quién quiere montar una oración con friendly? My, my, my sister, my sister is a person friendly. Is a friendly person. Yes. Ah, it's a friendly person. Yes, yes. Um, it, it, it's how you conjugate, but it's perfect. That's a perfect sentence. Thank you very much, Marlene. So the next one, we can use nice or pretty. Let's do a sentence with nice or pretty. Okay, I, I do one. I, I make, I make one. Uh huh. Please. Mm. But I use two two adjectives. Different. Yeah, you can use this. Okay. My mother is good and pretty person. That's great. That's great. So, that is super good. So, wait, let's go to expensive. Que es caro. Expensive. Let's do a sentence with expensive. Who wants to do a sentence with expensive? Yo puedo decir, my jacket is very expensive. No lo es, pero I can say my jacket is very expensive. My car is expensive. Or these chicken breasts, when we go to a supermarket, oh my God, these chicken breasts are super expensive. I make um, one. We um, uh, ¿Cómo se dice sobrino? Nephew, my nephew. My nephew, my nephew is mm, weak and um, esteem. Your nephew is weak, correct? Uh -huh, it's weak, yeah. Tiene hecho weak de estar enfermo, entonces está... Okay, so he's weak and sick. And sick, uh -huh. All right. So your nephew is weak and sick. Ruby, pick up one verb. Yeah, one adjective and just put a sentence together. Thank you very much, Rosalie. Okay. My weekend is fun. Very good. Your weekend is fun. You see how the use of those adjectives um, help a lot. It helps us describe much more. Wow, what we are doing. Okay, so in the next page, we're going to talk about adjectives again, but what are adjectives? The adjectives are things that we're going to taste, feel, how it looks, it describes how it smells or it sounds. Just take a look at these um, words and just let me know if there's any word you don't understand so I can translate for you. Le dije, estos son los adjetivos son um, palabras que nos ayuda a describir cómo sabe, cómo se siente, cómo se ve, cómo huele y cómo, su, cómo se escucha. Lea la lista de adjetivos. Tienen preguntas o dudas de cualquiera de estos adjetivos. Eh, me deja saber para yo poderle traducir y ponerle ejemplos, porque hay unos adjetivos aquí que son un poquito más, uh, que no se usan tan comúnmente, ¿ok? Uh, den una miradita y yo vengo en un minuto luego de que ustedes lean esta pantalla. Sí. Sí.
Permítame un segundito, estoy haciendo una prueba, tratando de poner el video en lo que ustedes hacen en el ejercicio, por eso le quité la pantalla un momento, y estoy tratando con la otra persona a ver si puedo poner el video en la pantalla, ¿ok? okay. Sí, es que se no, me, no me dan caso si ven que tienen muchas pantallas locas que estoy haciendo una prueba para el video. Ok, estoy de, de vuelta. ¿Están viendo mi, mi PowerPoint, correcto? Ok, en el que estábamos. Vamos a empezar a leer. We're going to start reading first by taste. Who, is, who wants to read the adjective of taste? For me. Ok, Rosalie, can you read these, these adjectives under taste, please? Where the mouth is at. Um, my juice. You just, need, you just need to read. Yeah, my juice is sweet. That's a, a, a good um, sentence. Yes. Formar uh, oración. Tú puedes leerme, leerme primero los uh, um, adjetivos de, en esta columna. Okay. Y entonces después me puedes formar oración con algunas de ellas. Pero léeme los adjetivos. Okay. Sweet, sweet, mm -hmm. sour, 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 um, bitter, bitter, uh, crunching, crunching, salty, salty, algo así, salty, salty. Es como si en donde está la hubiera una o salty. Salty, okay, thank you. Salty, así suena, salty. Salty. Chewing. Chewing. 
No, y es que lo que se me hizo raro es un nombre de persona, Celso. Hubiera dicho en inglés algún punto y así, o tres. Ok. No podemos te digo nada. Pon atención a mi clase. Ya, yeah, uh, acabo, le acabo de, el, de poner en mute a alguien. Ok, ajá. Estamos okay. juicing. Juicing, hot. Mm -hmm. uh, Fasting. Feasting. 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 Tostel. Tasteless. Tasteless. Eso uh, es soso, que no tiene ningún tipo de sabor. Soso. Uh -huh. Eso es soso. En Puerto Rico le decimos soso, que no tiene sabor. Uh -huh. Delicio. Delicia. Delicious. Delicia. Oh. Delicious. Ok, sweet es dulce. Sour es amargo. Um, bitter. Uh, déjame buscar la traducción exacta porque yo la, yo la reemplazo con amargo también y quiero decirle exactamente Peter, I'm gonna tell you exactly um, yo tengo una pregunta uh -huh. yo, o oh, bueno, yo sabía o más bien yo creía que sour es, um, es uh, agrio agrio, sí, eso es lo que estoy viendo porque yo lo uso los dos, los intercambios Está en lo correcto. Sour es, es amargo. Oh. So, discúlpame, agrio. Okay. Y bitter es amargo. Oh, yeah. Ok. Bitter es amargo. Acabo de buscar el... Um, so, tienes amargo como bitter, sour como agrio. Salsa okay. agria. Gracias. Mm -hmm. No, de nada. Gracias a ti. Crunchy, crujiente. Uh. Salty, salado. So chewy es como gomoso. Um, déjame buscar, no quiero usar palabras que sean puertorriqueñas porque no, a ustedes no les sabe, les, les voy a enseñar incorrectamente. Chewy en Spanish es. Ok. ¿Quién usa eso? Fibroso, correoso, olvídate. Como chicloso. Dry es seco. Juicy es jugoso. Hot es caliente. Fizzy, yo, y déjame ver si no me, si no me malinterpreto, no, no estaba equivocada con el of Fizzy. Pero Fizzy es como espumoso, como gaseoso, como cuando uno abre una, un refresco y sale la espuma. When, when we open a, a, a Coke or something, it does like, that's the Fizzy thing. Tasteless es sin sabor, delicious es delicioso. Ahora vamos a hacer una oración. Um, hazme, una, uh, hazme dos oraciones con algunas de estas palabras de aquí, dos, dos de estas palabras. ¿Yo? Ah. Uh, my juice, uh -huh. my orange es sweet. My orange juice is sweet. Ok. <risa> You can also say my orange juice is sweet, or you can say <laughs> sorry, my sweet orange juice. No escuché. You can you can either say my orange juice is sweet. You can say mi jugo de naranja es dulce. Yes, my or, or you can say my sweet orange juice, mi dulce jugo de naranja. And it's it's like you can use that, that too. But in Spanish, it doesn't sound the same. En español no suena igual de bien. Pero puedes usar ambas maneras. Puedes usar el adjetivo antes o después del nombre. Ok, okay ¿cuál es la próxima um, palabra? Uh, my coffee mm -hmm. is too hot. Too hot. That's super good. Perfect. So now we're gonna go. Um, do you guys have any questions about any of the taste words? Maybe how to use those words. If you have a question on how it will sound, any of those words will sound on a sentence. Si ustedes tienen alguna pregunta de cómo esas palabras van a sonar en una oración, o si quieren escuchar un ejemplo, tienen alguna alguna de estas palabras que quieren escuchar. Sí, sí, sí. 
fizzing se aplica a los a las sodas. Como so when I when I poured my coke into the glass, it was fizzy. Okay. Porque estaba gaseosa, estaba el gas, la gaseosa saliendo. Realmente significa gaseosa. Como so puedes, puedes decir, por ejemplo, I don't like the soda because it's uh, too much fizzy. It's too fizzy. It's too fizzy. Too okay. Fizzy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. O I don't like fizzy drinks. No te, no te gustan jugos gaseosos, bebidas gaseosas. Yeah. I don't like fizzy drinks. En, te, okay. en mm -hmm. tasteless, te, ¿cómo es? Tasteless. Tasteless. Mm -hmm. tasteless sería my butter, no, my butter water uh, is tasteless. Your what? Uh, sería the butter water. The water? Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. It is it's tasteless. tasteless. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> the, the water is tasteless. Okay. Um, that chicken is tasteless. Um, aquí lo pueden usar mucho porque sabes que aquí la, lo, ellos cocinan a veces medio sin sabor. Ajá. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> no saben, ¿verdad? Okay. <laughs> so, next one is about feeling, about touching, about the touch. Um, who's gonna read the word for feels? Let's go, Mirna, the, the feeling words. Okay. Can I read Prickly. Prickly? Smooth. Mm -hmm. Road. Rough. Uh, rough. Uh, Rough. Soft. Hard, sticky, mm -hmm. thick, mm -hmm. uh, sticky, mm -hmm. heavy, light, bumpy, spike, spiky. Spiky, that's correct. What two sentences we can take out of here? Mm, my toothbrush is soft. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's hard. My my answer. Light. La palabra light que está aquí no es de lo como por ejemplo light de las comidas. No. Light, sorry. Light es liviano. Oh, yo liviano. pensé que como Ajá. cuando uno dice de... Que se siente liviano, sí. Como también es de lo mismo de, la, de las comidas, ¿verdad? Que a veces usan light, light, light food, sí, pero eso... Es diferente. Pero en este caso, ellos se refieren a liviano, uh, about weight. Light is about weight. When somebody can be heavy or they can be light or, you know... So you can use the light for that baby, like that. Let me see. Let me use that. Oh, well, that pencil is light. Light, like it's not heavy. It's not heavy. Es el opuesto de heavy. Heavy. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Pero también lo usan para para comidas light, supuestamente. Mm -hmm. Es es cierto, lo he visto. Um, y sí se puede usar como eso también, but in this context, it's just talking about how it feels. Si se siente liviano, si se siente pesado. So that's perfect. Um, do you guys have any word that you might be have a doubt about? I think prickly is the kind of weird word, the first one. Prickly es espinoso. Oh. Prickly is que te está cuando, like when you touch a rose or a flower and it, 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 it la flor, la rosa de te, te peta, te hace espina. prick a los dedos, ajá, las espinas, espinosas. Mm. Um, ¿Alguna otra palabra que no entiendan? Any other word you guys don't understand from this list? Uh, bumpy, bumpy. Bumpy. Bumpies and bumps. Um, como cuando tienes como, como como ronchitas, ¿no? Como ah, como como uh, elevaciones. Ajá, que, que igual que when you go on the road, the road can be bumpy too. Cuando tiene un montón de 
um, muritos y cosas. This is a bumpy road. Or you can say um, the skin is bumpy porque we had we got some bumps maybe from an allergy or something. So bumpy is when you touch it or when you feel it. It's like um, like that. Like it doesn't. It's not smooth. It's bumpy. Como decir como abulta, abultado, salvo. Como abultado, dependiendo para qué lo van a utilizar. Um, puede ser abultado o puede ser que el camino está así. Da, permítame un segundo porque me van a dar unas instrucciones ahora de cómo ponerles el video. Permítame un segundito. Estoy haciendo la prueba otra vez del video. Permítame un segundito y vuelvo otra vez a volver. Vamos a los ejercicios, ¿ok? Ok. Porque la bibliotecaria está tratando de explicarme algo. Permítame un segundo. Hey, Helen, this is Pat. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it's because she, she was on two times. What she needed, she was in, she, it was showing just the one that was showing on. She just needed to unmute it. That's all. She was in two times. Now, if she's in two times and the unmute is on both of them, it'll make a lot of noise. So, so just make sure one of them is unmuted. She, she was logging twice, and I think she, so she was trying to, and that's fine. She can log in twice, but to show that video, all she had to do is unmute. But if she's in there twice, and both of them are on unmute, what would happen is you get a lot of noise. Huh? Unmuted. One of them need to be unmuted, but right now, I only see her in there once. And so, so she must have came out of the other one. But if she going, uh, but if she come in again another way and try and show that video, she just needs to unmute it and keep the other one muted. Then when she, then when it's when it's over, okay, okay. So I see her coming on two times. It says the one with the presentation. She needs to unmute, unmute herself down at the bottom. Okay, so I'm unmuting the one with the presentation. And now you can hear me. I can hear you fine. Yes. Okay, can so you hear the, the video now? Okay, hit play and let's see what happens. Yeah, she just needs to turn it up a little bit. Turn it up a little bit, okay. Okay, yeah, she's good. All right. Oh, okay. Thank you. Honey. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, now we dis ya descubrí que es lo que estaba haciendo incorrecto. Vamos a terminar este ejercicio para poder eh, ver el video, ¿ok? Pueden ver ya las palabras, ¿verdad? Sí. Volvemos a las palabras. Disculpa, que estoy en mi oficina, en mi trabajo, y por eso tengo la máscara cuando voy a hablar con otra persona. Ok. Um, now we're going to go to the 
it's so bumpy. We already decided bumpy is like that. A bumpy can be how the skin feels, like something feels because it doesn't feel flat, doesn't feel smooth. And when you're driving a road, in the road is also super bumpy. In my country, in Puerto Rico, all the roads are bumpy. All the roads. <laughs> So that's normal. <laughs> so you can use that that um, word too when we're talking about how the road conditions are when they're a little bit jumpy. So now we're going to go to it looks. Um, let me see who's going to do the it looks or the side part. Silva, Sylvia, can you read the words? Please? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, now. Mm -hmm. It's uh, dark, mm -hmm. tiny. Mm -hmm. Long, skinny, mm -hmm. fat, thin, small, large, pickled, speckled, speckled, light, bright, and dot, 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 dot. So I'm going to go over the meanings of each word in Spanish because I know there's maybe two or three words there that can be a little bit um, tricky. And then we're going to put the sentences together. These we're talking about the appearance. When we see something, how to describe what we're seeing. So dark es oscuro, shiny, brillante, long es largo, skinny es um, delgado. Fat. Corto. ¿Qué bien skinny se refiere a una persona que es bien flaquita? Son los... Um, oh. Yeah. Porque tú puedes ser skinny o puedes usar thin, las dos cosas. Mm. Pueden ser intercambiables, pero skinny se refiere más cuando estamos hablando de una persona. Y thin tú lo puedes usar para una persona, para un animal, ¿me entiendes? Mm. Also, fat es um, gordo, thin es flaco. Small, pequeño, large es largo. Speckled, yo sé que esta es una palabra que a lo mejor tienen en duda, eso manchado. Puede ser cuando alguien tiene, tiene pecas en la espalda y tiene manchas en la espalda y en la piel. They're speckled. Speckled. Light es claro. Bright es brillante. Y dotted es pun con puntitos. Con, um, sí, que, que tiene puntos. También manchas. Tú puedes usar dotted también para algo que tiene manchas o puntos. Ok, so let us pick some of the, those words and do some sentences. Um, you can do two sentences for me. I'm going to put it back, ok, Silvia? I'm just okay. trying to look at you first. So I um, just need you to do two sentences from those um, characteristics. Uh, ¿Voy a decir una oración? Sí, sí, de do, escoge dos. Uh, my toes is small. Your toes is small? Yes, and my jacket is large. Okay. Your toes are small, your jacket, your jacket is large. So we're going to go now to its smells. Let me see who, who I haven't seen in a while. Ruby, can we l read about its smells? Can you read those words for me, please? Fresh. Fresh. Delicious. Rotten. Salty. 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 Smoky. Smoke or smoke? Smoky. So. Mm hmm. Spicy. Spicy. Ten. Mm -hmm. Stinky. Stinky. Mm -hmm. Sm smell. Smelly. Smelly. So we're talking now about we, what we can perceive with our um, smell, with our um, 
when we smell something. So that's what we're talking with. Estamos hablando ahora de lo que podemos percibir por la nariz. We can perceive that something's fresh. Fresh is fresco. Delicious. Delicioso. Bitter puede ser amargo, porque es que hay muchas palabras para amargo. Um, bitter es amargo, de hecho. Rotten es podrido. Y eso lo podemos oler. Salty es salado. Smoky es ahumado, como cuando nos comemos una carne ahumada. Sour es... Um, Disculpa, me quedé como amargo. Sour es amargo también, pero le voy a ver si hay una traducción agrio. Ahora mismo, lo que hablamos ahorita de la, la salsa agria. Spicy, picante. Teo, ustedes pueden usar teo para el pan está teo, porque quiere decir que está viejo y se puso duro. Y regularmente la, la traducción de teo es duro para que se refiere al pan y ciertas cosas que se ponen duras cuando son viejas, pero también esteo puede ser algo que ha estado quizá en la olla y se quedó en la olla dos días ahí y está esteo now. It smells, it smells, it smells bad, it smells teo porque se pudrió. Um, que no es rotten, pero es teo. Stinky es apestoso, sweet es dulce y smelly es oloroso. So, vamos a escoger dos oraciones y me vas a dar dos oraciones, por favor. Dos palabras y ya se vas a dar dos oraciones. We're going to do two sentences on, the, on this road. My flower is too fresh. Your flower is fresh? Oh, tan fresca o oh, no sé. No, pero ¿cuál es la palabra que quieres usar para fresca? Flores. Tus flores. Your flowers are fresh. You puedes usar fresh o puedes usar my flowers smell delicious or they smell fresh porque a veces las flores huelen frescas y hacen que la casa huela fresca. Puedes decir my flowers smell fresh. Um, ¿Y cuál otra oración quieres? ¿Qué otra palabra quieres utilizar? Um, my dog is spicy. Spicy. My, my dog. Okay. Correct. Ahora vamos a los sonidos. Edit sounds. Y ahí voy a pedir, Caro, léeme los sonidos. Um, no los veo, the sounds. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, loud, noisy, quiet, silent, squeaky, mm -hmm. uh, creaky, melodic, feisty, fizzy, fizzy, shrill, deafening, 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 and faint. Okay. So, very good. So, there's a lot of words that are here. Those words, some words are kind of, uh, we don't hear it them that much, or maybe we need to practice. So, hay unas palabras que yo sé que puede ser, que hasta yo misma lo voy a buscar ahora para darle el significado correcto. Loud es alto, sonido alto. Noisy es alborotoso. Es como cuando algo hace mucho alboroto. Um, quiet es callar, es quieto, callado, pero silent es mudo, como silente. So, son prácticamente, se pueden usar casi intercambiadas. Quiet, silent, and loud, and noisy, dependiendo de la situación, puedes usar either or. You can use either or. You have squeaky. Squeaky is when we're walking and the door is, is the door, the floor is like a wood floor and you walk and the wooden floor sounds like quick, quick, quick. Cuando caminamos encima de, la, de los talones de madera, ese sonido que hace, the squeaky, eso es squeaky. Um, creaky, te voy a decir ahora porque te quiero dar la, la definición exacta. Rechinar. Creaky es cuando algo rechina. Melodic es melódico. Fizzy, fizzy podemos sentir el sabor de la soda, pero también la podemos escuchar, porque cuando abrimos una botella de soda, se escucha el fizz. 
So por eso es que ves a Fizzy in sounds and in taste. Deafening es un sonido tan molestoso que te deja sordo. Y faint es algo, es un sonido bien lejano, como que se escucha a la distancia. So let's do two sentences with the sounds um, adjectives. Faint, it's a sound that you can hear in the distance? Yes, it's like a faint sound that in the background, like it's it's not a high sound. It's like something that you can hear in the background, but it's not not high. Lo voy a traducir literal lo que quiere decir faint en inglés, en español. Que no es desmayarse. Okay. Adjetivo. Es que, es que me tira la, la, la débil, un sonido débil en, en, el, en el background. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Por ejemplo, podría ser In the night, we can hear the faint sound of the train. That's perfect, yes. Okay. Okay. Shrill. shrill, ¿qué significa shrill? Shrill, oh, vamos a buscar shrill. shrill. Yo también me pregunto qué significa shrill. Well, let's see what shrill means. So I can give you exact... Estridente, un sonido estridente. Estridente podría ser como fuerte. Uh -huh. Ok. Um, Pero fuerte como de cantazo, como que rompió. Es como, como un, re, un trueno. Ok. Yeah. Puede ser quizás ajá, un sonido estridente de esa manera. Ok. Uh -huh. um, ok, entonces, uno más, ¿verdad? Una más. Una oración más, por favor. Ok, where I live is very quiet. That's super good. So, what I would recommend to you, um, I'm going to put this and send it to the emails again at the and you know, and most probably on Monday. This exercise here has a lot of new words. So, that's words that you can practice. So, try to, during the week, Look again the words that you don't recognize or you don't know and practice them so you can start learning vocabulary too. So, esta, esta, esta página tiene un montón de palabras, tiene palabras bien comunes, pero tiene otras palabras que son nuevas para nosotros en inglés. So, mi recomendación es que yo voy a poner esto, lo voy a enviar en el email de, de, la, de la clase y ustedes pueden entrar a... Um, buscar las palabras que ustedes no entendían o que no están acostumbrados a usar y practicarlas un poco más para que vayan haciendo vocabulario. Um, es la única manera de hacer vocabulario. Ahora yo voy a poner un video, ahora sí voy a poner el video que va a hablar de los adjetivos y todo lo que está en mi pantalla está saliendo. Y vamos a ir allá ahora. Yo creo que tengo que ponerme en mí. Déjame ver si es verdad. Ustedes me dejan saber. Si me escuchan o no, pero yo creo que me tengo que poner en mí. No se escucha. Ok, pues yo me tengo que quitar el, 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 la bocina. Ahora me, me voy a quitar la, el, el mute. No se escucha. No, no entiendo por qué no se escucha. Ya me dijo ahorita que se escuchaba. Yo estoy hablando de... de ok, no voy, a, no voy a matarme más nada con el video. Ok, vamos a los grammar worksheets adjectives. So, esto es un ejercicio de adjetivos. Um, You have the adjectives yeah, and you have the yeah, opposite. So, tienes yeah. sinónimos y tienes, so, tienes, tienes so, el nombre so, y tienes el antónimo de ese adjetivo. So, take a moment people, and you can read on the right? top of the page the adjective and the opposite. Let me see. see. So, you have beautiful and the opposite is beautiful is ugly. So, start reading for a little bit.
No se ve, ya no están en la pantalla. Está porque estamos, estoy haciendo una prueba de nuevo, discúlpame que la abrí, no te quería volver a llamar. Lo sé, disculpa, dame un segundo. Está bien. Okay, now we're gonna start back again with the presentation. Beautiful, ugly, es bello y feo, bright and dark, clean and dirty, empty and crowded. Crowded, empty es vacío, crowded is cuando está muy lleno, cuando está um, lleno de, de personas. Interesting and boring, large, and small, modern and traditional, neat es organizado, messy es desorganizado, so los antónimos, el, el antónimo de organizado es desorganizado, neat es organizado, new and old, quiet and noisy, relaxing and stressful, Spacious and cramped. Spacious es espacioso, cramped es cuando todo está uno encima del otro. Como cuando hay un apartamento pequeño y mucha gente vive dentro del apartamento, el apartamento está cramped. Terrific es excelente o, o bueno o lo que sea. Terrible es terrible. Literalmente se escribe como se escribe en español. Unusual es algo fuera del ordinario. Ordinary es lo ordinario. Well known es bien conocido. Unknown es no conocido. Algunas de estas palabras todavía tienen duda de lo que significan para empezar a hacer las oraciones. Interesting. Because, um, interesting yeah. es interesante yeah. y boring es yeah. aburrido. Solo en contrario de, de, de interesante es aburrido. Oh, ok, gracias. Mm, no, no. Interesting and boring. Now you guys are going to go ahead. You're going to read those sentences. You're going to make, uh, fill those blanks. And we're going to come back um, to go ahead and read over this exercise. Ok. Let me go ahead and I mean, you know, you're teaching the class, just know where it is to come back and get it. 
They don't mind. But I, I'm trying recording it. It's just that, and I'm doing it on here, and that it had been going, like, you know, I keep getting all the commercials on the side. I got to figure out how to cut that off. Before it wasn't messing up when I cut the commercials off on the side. Now when I do it, it stops recording. So now I got to put them all together two or three times, so I'm just leaving it alone. I'm going like, I would like for it to be seamless, but I know how to put them together. Other than that, they could be up here by themselves, but since I'm recording it. <laughs> but I'm working with some, with some people who don't know much about the technology, so they're learning. But we getting there. The, the people in the class no more, but they just don't speak English. <laughs> so they can't help us. <laughs> but she speaks she speak Spanish. We don't want to be able to help her though. Yeah, I know if, it's, if you're on there two times, you gotta mute it. Mute yourself. Okay, we're back. Let's go ahead and start practicing these sentences. So I'm going to read the first one because it's already filled and then you guys are going to start doing from the number two down. So I say, I like to study at our school library. It isn't noisy. It's very quiet. So number two, um, who's going to start doing number two? You want me to go over them and um, go over them and ex that way you kind of understand what's going on in the sentences? Okay, estas oraciones están usando un adjetivo y el opuesto del adjetivo. Por ejemplo, la primera te dice, a mí me gusta estudiar en nuestra biblioteca porque no es ruidosa, es muy callada. En la segunda va a volver a hacer lo mismo, va a decir, muchas personas de alrededor de todo el mundo visitan este museo. Es bastante, entonces ahí buscamos de estas palabras que están acá arriba, en este caso sería crowded. Because a lot of people from all over the world visit that museum. It means it's crowded. Okay, okay. It means it's crowded because everybody is visiting. On the number three, it says our living room has many large windows. So it's blank, especially in the morning. So we can use bright because it has a lot of windows and the windows let the sun come in and make the room brighter. But you really um, can, can use a couple of other words, but here the bright one is the one that really goes in. So who wants to try the number four to see if um, we get those adjectives? Okay. I. Mm -hmm. you. Because I, I have a question about about that sentence. But first, I'm gonna I'm going to say the the word. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, many people eat at the restaurant. It's always cro uh, crowded. Crowded. It's never empty. Yeah. This Correct. Is children, you so know, my question is: home. You can the say many out. people eat at the restaurant. It's always full. Um, the thing is, when we're talking about crowded, crowded comes from crowd, from a lot of people. So okay. when, you, when you're full, you're full because you ate too much and your belly's full. Okay. <laughs> but when there's a lot of people, when there's a crowd of people, that's when we use the crowded thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 the concerts are crowded, um, the mall is crowded because it's where people gather. 
That's when they're crowded. We're talking about a crowd. Yeah. Muy bien. Gracias. De nada. So number five. Who wants to do number five? That's why I have to do it here because she got the the L or whatever. Unless I do it with the other laptop where I go straight into my um. I have to go straight into my uh my my. my you, I think you can use like let me see. I live on the thirty sixth floor. Mm. But I'm using you can use most of this you can use any of these words there and we, then we can discuss which world we, we, we go by so you can do a try and just pick a word that you think that will go on that number five yeah, because I the number two the sentence number two mm -hmm. I put it's quiet interesting so it's quite interesting it can be too it's not incorrect it's not totally incorrect uh, but because they're talking about how many people are coming from all over the world then we're talking about a m amount okay yeah. but you can yeah you can you can that can be part of it it's not incorrect no está completa no está mal porque tú puedes decir mira mucha gente viene a este museo porque es interesante Sí, pero está hablando de cantidades. Pero, pero eso... igual, igual puedes decir, interest is quite interesting. Many, many people from all over the world visit that museum. It's quite interesting. Or it's quite crowded because so many people visit it. Um, you can also use, let me see. I, I, you can use also well known. It's quite well known, muy conocido. Yeah. Okay. So you you oh, see you okay. can use more than maybe one adjective for so th that's what I'm saying. There's really really there's no wrong re um answer completely. So don't be afraid of it because you can use different adjectives as long as it has to do with what you're talking about. Okay. Um. Yeah. The only one that will say, the number four is the only one that will say, okay, it has to say it's always crowded, it's never empty because it's literally the opposite. They're talking about that. But for the number um, two, it will not be incorrect if you change the, the description and just say it's quite well known, it's quite interesting. And if you find it boring, you can say it's quite boring. You know, it's really going to depend on what your conversation is going to be. Um, that number five, I'm having kind of the, my apartment building is very blank. I live on the 36th floor. So, let's see if I can, I don't know, I'll say large. What, what word do you think it will go there? Yo puse it, cramped. Cramped? You say something about it. So I think cramped. it's a mm -hmm. department and maybe it's a uh, um, pequeño a little department and maybe it's crumpet and it's uh in the 36th floor it can I, be I cramped yeah it can be cramped if, if there's 32 floors and a bunch of apartments in there it can definitely be cramped um but you guys can look at it and obviously it's going to depend on where you want to take the conversation maybe you're saying my apartment building is very cramped um i live on the 36th floor and like a million people live in that apartment so we're cramped in there you know or whatever so it's going to really depend on where your conversation is going to so you can use cramp is not totally incorrect on it either it can be large as an adjective because it can say because if there has 36 floors it means there's a large apartment building yeah it's super big i've like i think only the millionaires live like in those apartments like very high ones with ten houses and everything Oh, but it says here, next one. The, the park near my home is black. It has many flowers and trees. Who wants to do it? Who wants to do this one? If uh, the park near my home is beautiful, it has many flowers and the trees. That's perfect. It's beautiful because it's full of flowers and trees. You can use relaxing because that's something you can do too so you can say that place is relaxing because it has flowers and tree but beautiful will be like the really better word best word for that one there and like i told you there's no right or wrong no hay nada, no hay nada incorrecto o correcto en describir lo que ustedes entiendan que van a describir después que ustedes entiendan el contexto del que ustedes están hablando Vamos para el número siete. i don't like that shopping mall there's nothing to do there it's what it's 
It's boring. It's boring? What else we can use there to describe that shopping mall? Boring, it can be mess. No, let me see. There's nothing to do there. There, it's old. Sometimes old shopping malls are like uh, there's nothing to do there. Um, yeah, yeah that 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 should be that should be about it. I'm so sorry. I took this away. Okay. So my bedroom was too. So my mother asked me to pick up my toys. Too messy. Sorry? Too messy. Messy. Messy is the correct word. Where, where, sorry. Um, let me see who wants to do the number nine. Sylvia, do you want to do the number nine? Okay. This, that department store was mm -hmm. built a few moments ago. It's um maybe old? No. It was just built a few months ago. O sea, estuvo construido hace varios meses nada más. Entonces, ¿qué es el, el, esa tienda? ¿Es nueva new. o vieja? New. It's a new. It's new, correcto. Because it was just built a few months ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's new. It's new. So let me see. Let me get my next victim. Rosalind. Um, vamos a ir con la 10. Me, léeme la 10, por favor. Read the 10, number 10 to me, please. My comment is not on the uh, It's really quiet. It's really quiet. Okay. So it says here, mi casa no es inusual. Si algo no es inusual, ¿cuál es el, 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 el antónimo de, de inusual? Es algo común, normal. So, when you pick up a word from up here, we're going to go, my home isn't unusual. It's quite, ¿qué palabra, what word would you use for it? Sorry? Sorry. We can use traditional too because it's I not see. unusual but we can use ordinary you see here we have that the chart says unusual so my house is very ordinary it's really ordinary that's the correct word thank you um marlena estás ahí sí. okay okay marlena va a poner la pantalla vamos a hacer let's do the number 12 Unfortunately, my office is too nice, noisy. Noisy? Noisy, busy, and crowded. crowded. So, so it. What would you say from a place that's noisy, busy, and crowded? Wait. Wait. Noisy, ruidosa. Noisy, ruidoso, busy es ocupado y crowded es que está muy lleno de gente. Si sí, un lugar es así, ¿qué te da ese lugar? ¿Te da estrés? Sí. Mucho ruido, mucha gente. Estrés, estresful. Estresful, because my office is too noisy, um, too busy, there's too much going on, it's stressful. ¿Quién es? Para, estamos ya um, terminando. Ruby, me vas a dar um, la nombre número 14. Hospital are always very... Si lees el resto de la oración, vas a saber cuál es la, la contestación. They're not duty. 
Exactly. Hospitals are always what? What does, ¿Qué tienen que, que los hospitales hacer? Si los hospitales no están sucios, ¿qué están? Clean. Clean. Mm -hmm. Very clean. So hospitals are always very clean. They're clean. They're not They're dirty. Not dirty. They're yeah. So we're going to finish with what we were discussing about the adjectives. Uh, adjectives, I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, I just want to know if you guys have any questions about any word or something that you might have a question about those adjectives. No? Okay. So uh, before we leave, let's see what you guys doing for Valentine's Day because it's, not, it's something. ¿Qué van a hacer para el día San Valentín, que es el domingo? What are you guys doing for Valentine's? I'm sleeping all day. You're sleeping? <laughs> yeah, I think there's a lot of us. Are all of you guys sleeping? No. Where are you going, Carol? I am going to work. You're going to work? Yeah, in a Valentine's event. Oh, that's, that's cool. So... Yeah, it's gonna be different, and yes. I need a job. So for that day, I'm gonna, I'm going to work. So that's my gift, my Valentine's. That's gift. your Valentine's gift for yourself. <laughs> Vamos yeah. a ver que los esposos no se pongan porque son tacaños. Oh, no, he, he already gave me something. What did he give? What did he siempre give you? Se adelanta. Sí, siempre se adelanta. So. That's that's nice. Who else is gonna do something for Valentine's? Are you going to do anything for Valentine, Sylvia? I'm going to the church. Mm -hmm. That's, That's good. That's and good. Go, church is go good. To the restaurant. Go eat. Mm. That's good. You're going to a church. You're going to be with other people. And you, Rosalie, what are you going to do for Valentine's? Maybe I'll leave in the store. My daughter. Mm hmm. And Mirna, what are you doing for Valentine's? Uh, I'm going to the, the church. Um, after um, returning my house. <laughs> returning my house. Well, church is, church is nice. Yeah. The church is nice. And Ruby, what are you doing? Most probably they're going to have food after the service. Ruby, we are the restaurant. To a restaurant? That's nice. So I really hope that you guys have a good weekend. You enjoy your Valentine's Day and make sure to practice. If you have any word that you have doubts or anything, just write it down. Anything that you hear that you don't understand, cualquier cosa que ustedes escuchen y no entiendan, escríbanlo. Y, y vienen el viernes a la otra próxima clase y dicen, mira, escuché esto y no, no sé de qué están hablando. ¿Me puede explicar? Y ese es el momento. Puede ser que la clase que viene yo no la dé, pero le puedes preguntar a la muchacha si no la guarda hasta que yo dé la próxima clase si quieres que te lo traduzca al español. Conmigo no hay ningún problema, me puedes enviar un email y yo te traduzco. Just always be curious, curious. Uh, there's still some words that are difficult for me too. So always be curious, always try to watch, like I've been telling you, watch your stuff in English, watch some shows in English, listen to some English music. And just be curious, if there's a word you don't understand, just write it down or like you think it's written. No tienes que saber escribirla, lo vas a escribir como la viste. And then you can ask and check and see, and that's how you get vocabulary, okay? Just practice verbs and practice adjectives, and um, that should be good. And on Monday, I'm going to put this PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to try to send you the link for the videos that I wasn't able to do, so you guys can watch the links on your end and practice adjectives with the links too. Voy a ponernos en email los links de los videos que estoy tratando de enseñar y fue fallido. A ver si pueden ver los videos en sus casas y así practican un poco durante la semana, ¿está bien? Ok. Ok. Que tengan buen día. Igualmente, gracias. Gracias. Bye bye. 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 Bye.